Good morning, YouTube. Let's go live on Instagram. We are live on Instagram. We are live on TikTok. Cool. So good morning, everybody. It is 420. And while I have never actually ever smoked weed in my life, um, I know this is an honored day for some folks. So today is Tuesday 10. I wanted to talk about a brief look at cannabis and concussion recovery. Um, so this is coming from one, literally just one study, the, the research on um, cannabinoids and the endocannabinoid system is extensive. It's complicated. I'm not going to cover even half of it. Um, I just wanted to look at one study. <clears throat> it was uh, from, I believe I'm saying the name right, Singh and Neary in 2020, Neuroprotection Following Concussion, the Potential Role for Cannabidiol, um, Canadian Journal of Neurological Sciences. So they basically looked at CBD. Um, so what we're going to run through is basically CBD, a little bit of THC knowledge, um, but what, what potential benefits it might have in neuroprotection around concussion and traumatic brain injury. The punchline is that cannabis, particularly CBD extracts, may be beneficial before and after a TBI, um, but we don't have any double-blind placebo-controlled trials to confirm or deny that. Um, <clears throat> we don't really have a ton of human data in general. So <clears throat> brief knowledge about the cannabinoids and the endocannabinoid system, just so we kind of know what's going on there. Your body produces its own cannabinoids. So we produce endo within the body, endocannabinoids. Um, and we produce those in response to pain, to trauma, to inflammation. So after TBI, after traumatic brain injury, we, we will see this upregulation in the production of endocannabinoids. Um, the two that we, we talk about are uh, called anandamide. Um, so arachidonyl ethanolamide or anandamide is the short one. Um, CBD might actually work by prolonging the effects of anandamide. And the other one is 2-AG or 2-arachidonyl glycerol. Um, so the two endocannabinoids we produce are anandamide and 2-AG. They bind to these two cannabinoid receptors, CB1 and CB2. So CB1 is found more within the central nervous system along axons and these synaptic terminals where neurons connect and kind of communicate. Um, and THC is more active along the, the CB1 receptors. And THC is psychoactive in a way that may actually decrease cognitive performance and memory. So we see THC kind of, uh, it does things on fMRI that we wouldn't typically associate with performance and good things. Um, it kind of decreases function. Um, CB2 receptors are found more within the peripheral nervous system um, or like peripheral immune system. And then centrally, they're actually on microglia. Um, and if you've listened to any other talks that I've had on kind of inflammatory responses and concussion, you'll know that the microglia are really important um, in driving inflammation and concussion. Um, so basically your body produces two cannabinoids, anandamide and 2-AG. There's two receptors, CB1 and CB2. CB1 is more THC driven, more psychoactive. CB2 is more um, CBD driven, I guess. This is way oversimplified. Um, it's more peripheral, it's more immune regulating. Um, back to the fMRI thing, CBD doesn't seem to decrease performance or um, memory or these cognitive deficits on fMRI the same way that THC does. Um, there are other receptors for like biochemistry nerds. There are other receptors, vanilloid receptors, adenosine receptors, serotonin receptors, and G-coupled receptors that these endocannabinoids and, and phytocannabinoids will, will work upon. Um, and so that's kind of that. That was a whirlwind, but that's kind of that. So um, body produces its own cannabinoids, endocannabinoids. Um, so anandamide 2-AG. It binds CB1 and CB2 receptors. Uh, also benign, binds vanilloid, adenosine, uh, serotonin, G-coupled receptors. Um, so it has effects everywhere. So basically researchers are like, hey, like maybe it'll do something within, um, within TBI. So when they look at benefits and we look at the mechanisms of concussion and I've talked about this a lot in a bunch of other posts um, and other Instagram lives but when we look at the mechanisms of concussion in no particular order we see that there's benefit in a whole bunch of um, areas so we see benefits in blood brain barrier integrity uh, heart rate variability maybe uh, dopamine preservation cerebral blood flow which you know is huge I talk about that a ton uh, cortical functional connectivity, so like your default mode network versus your executive function network. Uh, we also see benefits in plasticity um, and protection against radical oxygen species, so it's an antioxidant. 
Um, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about how it does each of those things <clears throat> for folks who are interested and then give my general takeaways. Um, so again, in no particular order, this is coming from largely from animal data and from in vitro, meaning like Petri dish data. So this isn't from double blind placebo. This isn't from humans uh, living, walking around. Um, this is largely from rats and from Petri dishes. So take that for what it's worth. This is not set in stone hard science. This is not, uh, it is hard science, but it's not set in stone clinical data. Uh, so CBD and THC in no particular order with no particular weight behind these benefits. Blood brain barrier, it might protect the integrity uh, by preserving the tight junctions um, through uh, PPAR and serotonin receptor mechanisms. So basically after a head injury, your blood brain barrier starts to get a little bit leaky, leaky and that's where we see that inflammation and stuff kind of uh, leak through and get a little bit worse. Um, so CBD might preserve some of that function. In terms of heart rate variability, so we know that autonomic function, um, your parasympathetic sympathetic function gets wonky. And we know that we can see that in the heart. We can see basically your heart rate variability is the change. <coughs> sorry, got, uh, I keep getting seeds stuck in my throat. I got to look into that. Um, we'll see a change with inhalation and exhalation. And so you want your heart rate to go up when you inhale and you want it to go down when you exhale. And you, so you want this smooth variability. Um, and we see in rats uh, that CBD may actually attenuate arrhythmic activity. So this arrhythmia of like, like changes in regular blood flow. <laughs> I don't know if that was helpful at all, but changes in regular blood flow. It may, it, uh, heart beating, I should say. Uh, it might attenuate that, improving HRV. Uh, it's still very unclear data. We're not even sure how it's doing that. We just see that in rats, it attenuates arrhythmic activity, which may indirectly improve your heart rate variability. Um, we see dopamine preservation. So we know after concussion, some of the striatal pathways can be wonky. Um, THC and CBD both may affect these pathways differently um, through dopamine receptors and these, again, striatal pathways, and it may be protective. So some, some rats with like uh, models of Parkinson's disease, we saw that CBD was really, really cool. Um, so take that for what it's worth. In terms of cerebral blood flow, there's cerebrovascular effects, so literally just the blood vessels, and then there's the cardiovascular effects. We kind of talked about the cardiovascular with heart rate variability, um, but all cell types involved in cerebrovascular control, so all the neural pathways and all the cell types involved in cerebrovascular control have the capacity to make their own cannabinoids. Um, so we're kind of like, well, then cannabinoids must be able to affect those. And when we look at giving CBD to, again, um, like mice and, and animals, we'll see that there's, uh, like if we purposely occlude blood flow through the middle cerebral artery and we administer CBD, uh, that CBD will restore blood flow through the middle cerebral artery in, again, in rats. Um, and so we think that CBD might be able to increase and or regulate blood flow after a concussion and we see dysregulated blood flow after concussion. So that's kind of cool. Um, in terms of cortical functional connectivity, we'll see asynchrony, we'll see um, like altered synchronicity within the default mode network and with the executive function networks. Um, so default mode is kind of your ego, your autopilot, your daydreaming. Executive function is what you're hopefully using to like pay attention and soak some of this stuff up. Um, and after concussion, that default mode network gets really, uh, it's not synchronized. It'll just kind of kick you out of, out of focus uh, just whenever it wants. Um, and we might see through unclear mechanism of action, but we might see improved uh, uh, default mode network coherence um, with CBD. We don't see that with THC. Um, in terms of enhancing plasticity and neurogenesis, the formation of neurons and um, BDNF, brain-derived neurotrophic factor, CBD at, at capitalized high doses um, can increase BDNF. Uh, so that's where we're looking at giving rats to be like, 30 to 60 milligrams per kilogram. So for someone like me, that'd be uh, probably close to like 5,000 milligrams, five grams. That's way higher dose than you would ever see um, on the shelf. You would have to take bottles and bottles and bottles of CBD to get those kind of benefits. Um, so I'm looking for more research there. Um, so CBD at high doses can increase BDNF. It may actually protect, if you've listened to any of my talks, when you have the, the, the stretch of your neurons, uh, you get this calcium overload, we might actually see CBD protective against the calcium overload. Um, and through mitogen activated protein kinase, so MAPK pathways, 
Um, those are pathways involved in neural cell proliferation. CBD might be beneficial there as well. And then in terms of the last effect, antioxidant effect, um, the hydroxyl groups, biochemistry nerds, the hydroxyl groups on CBD itself may act as an antioxidant in and of itself. So that's kind of cool. So fire hose of information, uh, blood brain barrier, integrity possibly preserved, heart rate variability may be improved, uh, dopamine preservation, regulation of cerebral blood flow, uh, cortical functional connectivity may be improved. Um, we might have better plasticity and there might be an antioxidant effect to it. All of this is from animal data or Petri dish data. So we don't know how that's doing in humans, but that's pretty cool nonetheless. So my general takeaways, remember that this was not smoked uh, cannabis. This was not smoked whole plant with high THC ratios. Um, these were these were extracts like tinctures and capsules and, and very standardized um, uses of the cannabis plant. The ratios that had the better kind of neurological outcomes and better neurological benefits were um, low THC, high CBD. THC doesn't do a ton of things that we that we like in high doses, but there might be what's called an entourage effect when you have a little bit of THC or smaller ratios of THC to the CBD so that they can kind of work together. Um, CBD might actually block to some degree uh, CB1 receptors, minimizing the, the effects, the psychoactive effects of THC. Um, so you, but you still get the benefits of what THC is doing maybe for dopamine pathways or, or other stuff. So, so I think it's again, kind of detailed messy and we don't have that sorted out yet, but in general, the ratios favor low THC, high CBD. And remember the benefits, so the, the doses for some of these benefits were far higher than anything you would be able to, to get commercially. Um, so again, we're kind of waiting on, I'm kind of waiting on more human and, and placebo controlled research to say, hey, this is kind of the dose that works and then we can standardize that extract. Um, so we definitely need more research, but overall it looks promising. It's not a panacea, uh, it's not a cure, but it's pretty cool. Um, so just went a little bit over like 11 minutes. I hope you enjoyed the, the Tuesday 10. Um, again, we'll see if this Tuesday 10 sticks, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you for folks who hopped on. So I'm going to end here on YouTube. I don't think I saw any.